Well, good morning to you. Isn't it good to be able to share together around the Word of God and just fellowship for a few minutes? And um, as you can see, the title of this morning is, What Would You Do? I wonder if you remember the fad that we had was WWJD, What Would Jesus Do? And um, there were bracelets, and it was on all sorts of novelties and T-shirts, and what would Jesus do? And you could say, well, basically, isn't that the same thing as what would you do? Uh, shouldn't you look at Jesus and do what he did? But with that WWJD and all the bracelets and T-shirts and everything, um, did much change? I don't know. Possibly it did in some people's lives. But the question came to me as I thought of that. What would you do or what would I do in situations that Jesus found himself if we were right there in that situation? And um, we're going to be live streaming Tuesdays, Thursdays and Sundays because Tuesdays and Thursdays we're going to be looking at what would you do or what would I do uh, if we were landed in a situation like Jesus was. So... Tune in on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays, and we'll be able to really have a great time together. And I want to share something that's recorded in the Gospel of Luke, uh, from Luke chapter 19. And I'm going to read the verses to you first, and then we can have a look at what would you do. It says, Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a, na a, a, a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector. He was rich, and he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd, for he was short of stature. So he was a little guy. And it says, so he ran ahead and climbed into a sycamore tree. Now, a sycamore fig tree is a big tree, can grow 30 to 40 feet high, and has good strong branches where he could have got a good position to see Jesus. And um, verse 5 says, And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. <laughs> In other words, don't waste time. Zacchaeus, get down now. And um, for today... I must stay at your house. So he made haste and came down and received Jesus joyfully. In verse 7 it says, but when they saw it, when the other people saw it, and must remember in the crowds there were a religious people, people wanting to be around Jesus, and it says, but when they saw it, <clears throat> they all complained, saying, he has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Hmm. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Lord, look Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor, and if I've taken anything from anyone by false accusation or by false means, I restore fourfold. That means I'm going to give it back to them four times. And verse 9 and 10, two profound verses in the scriptures. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he is also a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which was lost. What a beautiful story. What, what an amazing account um, we have there of, of Jesus and how Jesus worked. Now, <clears throat> first of all, if we really study these scriptures, we'll see Zacchaeus was not a popular little man. As a matter of fact, he was very unpopular. The word says he was a chief tax collector, most probably over a district. And so he had other tax collectors working under him. And um, the region that they were in at that time was very prosperous, a very wealthy district. And so Zacchaeus collecting the taxes and fraudulently also increasing taxes and taking money he shouldn't possibly, was very rich. And he was paid by the Roman government. Now, the problem for the Jewish people was that these tax collectors were working for the pagan Roman government. 
the Roman government employed these Jewish people to collect the taxes for them. And as it were, um, Rome could sometimes charge exorbitant taxes, and then these tax collectors would still come in and even take more from them. So these tax collectors were actually detested by the Jews. The Jews hated them for helping the Roman government and taking from them. Um, and because they frequently defrauded their own people. So they were actually considered by the Jews as traitors. <laughs> well, you can guess from all of that, that Zacchaeus was not one of the most popular guys around. And um, possibly that's he couldn't see and he didn't want to push through the crowd. He, he thought the crowd might knock him down or push him out the way. But he wanted to see Jesus. That was the main point. And so he gets up to the sycamore tree and he can see Jesus. Now, one question I have is, what lengths are we going to? And I know this hasn't got to do what would you do in that situation. But what lengths are we going to to connect with Christ? He ran, short little man, must have scrambled up the, the uh, sycamore tree and uh, been up top there. And um, Jesus saw him eyeball to eyeball. Are we going the extra lengths, putting a little extra effort in to really connect with Jesus and see Jesus? But then Jesus says to this unpopular, hated little man, Zacchaeus, come with haste, come quickly, come down quickly. I must go to your house and I must lodge there as well. Um, and, and that was, I think, one of the most unexpected statements that everybody there would, could have heard. He had these religious folk, these other people who perhaps diligently follow Jesus around and his teaching, and uh, who knows, maybe they give him things. And um, he doesn't say that to any of them. He says it to this hated, what they called sinner. I must come to your house. There's a must. It's like an urgency. It's like I, I have to be there at your house today. And the others were thinking, Jesus do you really know who this is? This is the chief tax collector. He's a traitor to the rest of us. And Zacchaeus wastes no time. It says he hurriedly came down and he received Jesus joyfully. Can you imagine a man that's been shunned, a man that's been frowned upon, maybe spat on, I don't know what they did. Um, they were angry with, would ignore him. Most probably the only friends he had with the friends who'd come to his house for parties and that because he had lots of money. And um, here Jesus, the one he climbed a tree to see, comes to his house. And in verse 7, and I want to read verse 7 from the Amplified Bible. It says, And when the people saw it, they all muttered amongst themselves and indignantly complained. <laughs> he has gone in to be the guest of and lodge with a man who is devoted to sin and preeminently a sinner. I want you to think for a minute. What would you have done? What would you have done in that situation? Would you have said, ah, praise God, glory to Jesus. Uh, 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 Jesus is going into his house. Man, what an impact that's going to make in his life. We rejoice that Jesus is going to be in the house of a sinner and Jesus has got an opportunity to get this man sorted out or get him into the kingdom of God or change his life. Um, <laughs> or would we have been the others who would have muttered? You, you, you know, I'm sharing these things because when I look at church, especially now in lockdown and even before that, Church is wonderful, but you know, are we as people muttering and looking and selfish in who we visit and who we see and who we associate with and who we go to? Do we have the kingdom mentality in that? And I think the world is tired of religion. The world is tired of just church. They want to see Jesus alive and in action in the church to be drawn back to Christ. And... Um, <laughs> You know, was Jesus perturbed by the others? No, he wasn't. So my question to you this morning, before I, 
I give the closing thing that Jesus said is what would you have done if you were walking down that street and Zacchaeus was up in that tree and you know he was hated, he was fraudulent, he cheated, he was going against everything that the Jewish people stood for, your people stood for. Would you have said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry down, I must come to your house, I must actually lodge there, I must stay there. Or would we want to sort Zacchaeus out? Would we want to stand there and preach to him and, and, and tell him what he's doing wrong and he's got to sort his life out? Or would we do what Jesus did and just say, I want to be with you? Because, you know, it's in the presence of Jesus that things change. And if we're in the presence of Jesus and we are the salt and the light of the earth, we should be giving that to the world. The world should see that in us. Because what happened? The impact of what Jesus did. And um, I, I just want to look there at verse 8. And I'm going to get it for us quickly. Um, and in verse 8, Zacchaeus, now Jesus is there. He's in the house. He's with this man. And um, verse 8 says, Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. Listen, how many Christians are prepared to say, Lord, I, I see there's poor. I'm going to give half of my goods to the poor. <laughs> what would you have done if you were Zacchaeus now? Would you have said, oh, this is good. Jesus is with me. Hallelujah. I'm blessed and I'm highly favored. And I got the presence of God and, and all the rest of it. He says, look, Lord. Lord, I want you to see. I'm giving half of my goods to the poor. And not only that, he says, if I've taken anything from anyone by false accusation or false means or fraudulent means, in other words, if I've taken what I shouldn't, I restore fourfold. I'm going to give them back four times. I wonder if we were Zacchaeus for a minute, would we have done what he did? We've come to Jesus. He's blessed us. He's given us eternal life. We washed by his blood. We stand as children of God. We got everything we need. You know, yesterday, <laughs> I was with a man, and the Lord's blessing him. And the Lord's just blessing what he's doing for the kingdom of God. And he took me to a new uh, venture that they're doing, and him and I stood there and prayed together. But then he was telling me a story. where Now, he's in the process of building, and he needs money. And from the old structure, a man pulls up and says, what are you going to be doing with that stuff? And he said, well, nothing. I don't need the old structure anymore. And the man said, well, I'll buy it from you. And he said, well, you know, I'm not really used to selling things. I normally give things away. The man said, no, I'll buy it from you. And the man gave him 10,000 rand, went and took money and gave him 10,000 rand. And he collected the stuff. Short while later, a pastor came to him who was building a church and was telling him how, you know, looking at the stuff and, what he's doing and was talking to him saying he's building his church as well and um, you know they want to put the roof up now and told him what they got to do and you know what the Lord said to this man take that 10 grand and give it to him <laughs> how many of us would have done that we would have said well Lord maybe I'll, I'll give a 10 to him or maybe I'll give 20% to him and he just took it he said yeah take this for your building and you know what? When I stood in his building yesterday, when I saw what the Lord has done there, the Lord's blessed him far more than that 10,000 rand. So what would we do in Jesus' place and Zacchaeus' place? But you know what Jesus said? This is the amazing thing. Jesus says in verse 9 and 10, And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house. <laughs> You, you, you see, l l l let me tell you something. With Zacchaeus being in the presence of Jesus, there was an inward change when he's in the presence of Jesus. Something changed in his heart. And when we have changed heart, there should be outward action. And church, I'm challenging you today. Is there outward action of what Jesus has done in your life? Would you have given that man the 10 grand to complete his bill? Now, I, I could tell you how this man who gave that 10 grand away has been blessed and blessed and blessed. Beyond measure. But not only that. We all say Jesus in our heart. But are our hearts transformed? Are our hearts changed? 
Because if so, there should be outward action of blessing and kindness and joy and restoration and, and, and we can go on and on. And so I, I, I want to reiterate that if there is an inward change in you, there has to be outward action. And that's what the world is looking for. But Jesus says, today salvation has come to this house. Because he's also a son of Abraham. Now I'm sure the Jews wouldn't have wanted to hear that. How come he's not a son of Abraham? Look at him. No, no, but Jesus saw what he'd done. And then he says, for the son of man has come to seek and save that what was lost. But actually Jesus said, today salvation has come to all his house. His whole house was blessed. He was blessed. And then Jesus said, this is my purpose, to come and seek and save those that were lost. And I, 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 what an incredible statement. And so I just want to ask you this morning, <laughs> what would you have done if you were Jesus? And what would you have done if you were Zacchaeus? And I want to leave that thought with you. Church, I think we've got a lot of work to do and a lot of changing of heart to do if we really want to be like Jesus. And we really want to do what Jesus did. And I pray this morning <laughs> that our hearts are going to be changed. David said, Lord, create in me a clean, pure heart. And maybe this morning, through this message, you'll come before God. Forget about all who you are and what you can do and who you can preach to. and what you, Lord, create in me a clean, pure heart. Who can ascend up the hill of the Lord? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. So may the inward change produce these amazing outward actions. And that, I believe, will speak to the world more than anything else. So may you be a great example of Jesus. May you be an ambassador for his kingdom and bring blessing and honor to his name by doing what Jesus would have done. And Christ is in you. The Holy Spirit's in you. So it's all possible. So why don't you do, as Nike says, just do it. And you will be blessed. God bless you today. Look, make, you see opportunities in your life to be both like Zacchaeus and Jesus. That will change the world around us for the glory of God and his kingdom. God bless you.